Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode nine of Matt and John Make a Podcast. I am Matt. And I am John. And today's episode, this week's episode, is uh, it's going to be a Pittsburgh sports heavy. A lot of news this week. Uh, a lot of news. A lot of, yeah, a lot of national news um, coming out of Pittsburgh and, and b- both football and, unfortunately, baseball. We'll get into that. Um, but first... Uh, let's talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger out with a torn ligament in his elbow. Got uh, uh, taken out of week two, week two's game against mm-hmm. Seattle, and uh, backup Mason Rudolph uh, takes his place, and looks like we'll get the starts from here on out for the foreseeable future. And uh, Big Ben uh, says he plans on being back next year and wants to honor his contract. Uh, so, uh, John, what do you think about this whole Big Ben uh, well, situation? Here? It's pretty crazy. Um, I mean, like even now, I'm still kind of still trying to actually process it. Um, when this news came down, it didn't really surprise me, just because. When he didn't even attempt to even come back in the game, and like when I saw the last, the last few throws that he that he tried making, he just looked very uncomfortable. Like there wasn't too much um zip on his balls there. Um, so I was kind of already mentally preparing myself for the actual worst. Um, and when the news did come down, it it, it is a, a bit devastating because it pretty much makes this season I don't want to say ir- 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 irrelevant but it's pretty close just because even though I'm I'm really optimistic about uh, about Mason Rudolph and and like he did he did play a really good game on Sunday he was he, he was not he was not the reason why they lost that game but when you lose your franchise quarterback, it's it's just really hard to come back and try to recover from that. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. I'm not surprised um that he announced that that he's coming back that he's coming back. Um, I just couldn't see him. Um, I I could not see him retiring like that. And also too, he I believe had I believe he's like. Do like forty, like forty million dollars for the next two two seasons. So there was also that there, um, and like and for so many for so many national um people who just immediately said, oh, his career's done. He's he's gonna he's gonna retire. I mean, like you would think that after 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 around fifteen seasons that they would a- a- actually know how this guy operates he's not going to retire like that but um i'm very interested to see um how how his recovery process is like is his arm going to be is it going to to be stronger um but like it was also reported that um there were some people who thought that that he might have possibly had a tommy john surgery but but in fact that was that was that that wasn't not the case so Mm -hmm. so um yeah i'm very interesting um so I, uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty devastating. And at that time, the the like morale I would say of Steelers fans was at an all time low, especially yeah. especially after just a horrible a horrible loss, more so by how pathetic that the Steelers defense was. Um, Mason got us and kept us in that game. Moved 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 the, the ball really really well, but. That's he didn't, he didn't look intimidated by the situation. No, no, and that was something that I, I was most impressed by was was his poise. Um, it honestly looked looked like um in some in some aspects of of when like Ben um first debut and and ironically, um when he Second took game. over yeah when he took over for to, for to, for Tommy Maddox, he also also sustained an an elbow. Injury, so uh, 
it's kind of eerie when you think about it, right? We can only, yeah, we can only hope that um, he, uh, we have another rookie Ben type of season, and maybe maybe he lead, Mason leads us um, to a, a a surprising yeah. winning record and into the playoffs. I will uh, also say too, he is not Landry Jones. Like just based, no. uh, just based off off of that game alone. Like, whenever Landry came in, he had a really hard time, like consistently, um, consistently moving drives downfield. Whereas with like with like Mason, he was throwing, he was throwing at like short, intermediate, long. He was going through his progressions really well like I was very pleasantly surprised at how well that that he handled that whole situation and the way that he's been handling this all week is he has been very poised um in 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 his interviews and everything he's just he's handling this like a complete pro professional and Mm -hmm. and 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 his teammates have 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 really um have really driven home that point there of him like going into practice every every single day with he's always he's always the, the he's always the the first one there and the last person to leave which is which is is exactly w- w- what you want from 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 your franchise quarterback and and it didn't look like it didn't look like that um they the playbook um change drastically because no. there's also there's always cases uh when with other backups when ben got down uh with an injury and the backup came in it also it, it, it just seemed like yeah it was a shell mm-hmm. and it was conservative because there was no confidence from what i could have seen they went for it mm-hmm. it, it they kept on doing trucking the same way well, it also helped too that in his rookie year was pretty much a a like red shirt year for him, so like he could like sit back just right. just like um just like learn about the playbook, um be be behind Ben and just slowly take everything in um and like and he wasn't terrible in the preseason last year, but you could clearly tell he just wasn't ready yet. But in this preseason, like to me, he was clearly the the better quarterback over Josh Dobbs. Like, mm-hmm. just just he took care of the ball better. Um, he was better on his accuracy and just and just moving the offense in in general. Now, um, and as optimistic as people were, and um, of uh, uh, like Mason, the. I mean, like the the overall um, attitude and like morale of Steeler fans, especially on social media, was just it was sad. But then, a huge news came out on Monday night. Stunning news, actually. I was sitting in my recliner right there. I nearly dropped my freaking laptop in shock. I could not believe this move actually happened. But the Pittsburgh Steelers acquired highly coveted um, safety corner. However, that that you want to um detail him as Minka Minka Fitzpatrick, the 11th overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft from the Miami Dolphins, um and the Steelers also acquired also a like a fourth round pick and um in the 2020 NFL Draft and a seventh and and a seventh round pick in the 2021 Draft. Or didn't we give up another pick too in the 2021? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, from the from the Dolphins for. A first round pick, a um, and in, in 2020, a a fifth round pick in 2020, and a sixth round pick in 2021. When they gave up a, a first round pick, I, I I was stunned because apparently this is the first time since yep. 1967 pre Chuck Noll pre Chuck Noll we're going almost back what. 40, 50 years fifty years ago Unleashed. they gave up a first round pick. Um, for a player which I was shocked by, and like quite frankly, every single Steer fan on Twitter was mm-hmm. yeah. was stunned because this is completely unlike them. Um, 
I mean, like, I th- I think it was a brilliant move. It's a move that they needed to make, A, just because they have struggled so badly against tight ends and and and, sl- and slot wide receivers. On top of that, we also learned that they put Sean Davis on short-term IR due to a torn labrum. So they had a really desperate need. He is exactly the main thing that they needed on this defense was a safety who who could also play slot corner um, in this d- defense. And I- immediately, there was two ends of the spectrum. Either people were just so happy and enjoying this, and then the, there were people asking, why are, are you giving up a, a first-round pick when your franchise quarterback is on IR? And this is the, and this is and this is my whole take on it. Okay, Ben is signed for for what three more seasons, right? I believe so. And who is due forty million dollars? They also they all they also drafted they also drafted Mason Rudolph. So why e, 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 even even though the experts are are saying that for the next upcoming NFL draft, it's going to be a very deep quarterback class. Um, They are not going to be taking an, uh, another quarterback here. It's just, it's not going to happen, especially to this coaching staff and this franchise really believes in like Mason Rudolph. So that cancels that. And also too, I don't think that this team is going to be picking in the top 10 because I believe once September 3rd, 3rd, 30th hits, they have a lot and 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 even and even even with the 49ers game and the Cincinnati game, they have a lot of games where they can possibly win 7 to 7 to say like 9 games. And at, at that point if if you win like 9 games, you're you be what at like 15 to 20 there. Mm-hmm. And Supposedly, the main reason why the Dolphins accepted the Steelers' offer because they felt that the Steelers were going to be picking in 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 the top ten. Which, to me, if the Steelers are not picking in the top ten or in in the top fifteen, they easily they easily win this trade, in my opinion, just because of the of the desperate need that they have at free safety. Not to mention, too, this man is on his rookie contract. For the next four seasons, which I believe they're only paying a total of like five million dollars or six million dollars or some insane number. So I mean, like um, from um, my perspective, I love this deal. I think he's with them. Um, I gotta, I gotta believe because it, it's this year, mm-hmm. 2019. I'm looking on this one website. I think 2020 it's, and 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and, and I then I think went, there's a, I think there's a, uh, a claw. I think there's a team clause for year. 20, yeah. 2022 yeah. and then 23, he's an unrestricted. So his base salary is 1 million, uh, 83,199. Then it goes up to 1.9 and then 2.7. Um, so the cap hit is very, very low. It's very, very low. Which, um, which was a godsend because because this team was they were they really were pretty close to to the salary cap. So so this I, was. I think. I think Miami has the has debt cap hit of five million yeah. in twenty twenty because of the the signing bonus. Yeah. Um, but it's a f- friendly contract. It's a very friendly contract for the Steelers. Which, but, which like, like there was a a good like three or four real like really good reasons why the Steelers um went out went out for this trade, but also too, um I believe that both like that the, both Tomlin and Kev and Colbert when they were scouting him at Alabama they they went down to to Huskaloosa, I, I I believe on two separate occasions to personally scout him. So so the, the, so they absolutely they absolutely absolutely loved him mm-hmm. um, as as a prospect. So and their shoes, it was like you know what, like there are so many factors here that like that that like that make really good sense. So so 
they went out and I'm glad that they finally went out of their comfort zone to do something to actually do something like this and like and like I, I think we're seeing we are starting to see a little bit more more teams are are more are, are more willing to actually trade a like first round pick for for proven commodities I mean look at the Dallas Cowboys last year when they traded away um, or when they acquired a Mari Cooper from the from the Oakland Raiders um, for a like first round pick there. So um, and with with like first round picks, like you know those those are typically toss ups. Uh, I mean, like that's with anything exactly. So like you know you go for the you go for the the proven guy, and you know it's just it's pretty exciting because hopefully with the addition of him, it will eliminate some of these some of uh, of these big plays that they're continuing to consistently give up um from, from the from the Patriots game and from the Seattle game that needs to end and um and hopefully to create some freaking tone of turn uh, 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 over here so yeah. so Matt what would your I, I, what was your take here I like the move mm-hmm. I mean they're going I don't want to say all in on this um, but it helps up the defense even more. Um, there's some good players on that defense, but uh, this really helps. And I, I don't see how it can hurt. Yeah, I believe now that they that they have like ten first round picks now on this defense. So, uh, you know, if if Keith Butler cannot make this freaking work, that man needs to be fired before the season is over. There is no reason for this. For this defense not to be a, a top ten defense, yeah, like there is talent at every single level of this defense. Whether whether we are talking about like Cam Hayward, Stephon Tuitt, T.J. Watt, Devin Devin Push, Mark Barron, Hayden, Edmonds, um, Stephen, um, um, Stephen Nelson had an incredible game, um, against Seattle, and now you add freaking Minka Fitzpatrick. That dude is a playmaker, and yep. I mean like. You know the guy is good. When when freaking Nick Saban says he is the best captain I have I have ever coached. We're mm-hmm. talking about the possibly the greatest college football coach of all time. Mm-hmm. So like no more excuses now. This defense if this team wants to even think about competing this year, this needs to be a top 10 defense. Yeah. Um I want to get the point that we said earlier, but um, we you went you went off on your oh, yeah. tangent. Huh. But um, I I I never understood that people were saying why make this trade with Ben out. Like we said, he has his contract for a couple more years. It's not like it's a one and done year. Nope. If this was a rental player, okay, it's he, stupid. He has been pretty clear. I want to play. Throughout my contract, he's made that perfectly yeah. clear. If it was a one-year contract, okay, there's yeah, yeah. You, that has more uh, merit. Mm-hmm. But he has more years in his contract. Ben has more years in his contract if he comes back. Yep. Everybody's just crapping on uh, Mason Rudolph. Mm-hmm. There was even people that want us to uh, try out Colin Kaepernick, which would make no sense because. Why? Okay, guys. So, so, so we're going to sign Colin Kaepernick when when the organization is trying to find out if Mason Rudolph can can be Ben's successor. So, I mean, like, can you imagine if we did sign him? How long would it take for the for the media and and, and the fans clamoring for him to freaking start? We got rid of drama. Now we're going to bring more exactly. drama in. Exactly. It, 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 it just like. People like, and there's even idiots out there who are, are saying, "Oh, he's clearly better than Mason Rudolph." Newsflash: He hasn't played in over three seasons, and I'm not sure if you guys saw him, but but as like as as like as like once Steelers Twitter account at Steelers Depot has, has said, his tape is is not good. Like, and people constantly bring up, well, like he he had like. I believe it was like six. It was like sixteen touchdowns and, and like two into I INTs in his following year with the San Francisco 49ers. And and how bad was that? Was that 49ers team? They finished in last place. 
So like, I mean like, and and I'm not saying that that with Kaepernick he does not deserve to be on a team because believe me there are a lot of bad quarterbacks out there. Like there's teams that need a quarterback. As, I mean like especially as a backup quarterback. I'm like he should definitely be on an NFL team, but in this situation it just does not make a lot of sense to to sign him, especially to he does not know the Steelers offense and 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 like I said, they are trying to find out if Mason Rudolph is that guy. They just got to give the kid a chance. Yeah, exactly. Everybody wanted Dobbs not to be the second. He wanted everybody wanted Rudolph. Yeah. So when it Ben goes down, uh, you know what? We we don't we don't want you. Uh, let's get somebody else. And, that and makes what's no even, sense. And, and what's e- e- even funnier is like, for how long has Steeler fans been clamoring for this team to? F- to like to trade or sign someone in the secondary who is talented who could really help this defense. So, what Kevin Colbert does, he acquires one of the best young defensive, um, one of the best defensive backs that you could possibly have. And of course, <laughs> this freaking fan base is well m- I, complain about. Uh, well, I probably shouldn't have done it already. Uh, uh, Ben Zal, what, what what's the point? The season's over. Well, you know. <laughs> There's another season, exactly, and this one's not totally done yet. And he's under contract for four more years on his rookie deal. They can probably, and if they can <laughs> fin- down the road, they maybe sign him an, another contract. Oh, oh, look, they will. Like, if he pans, if he's, if he plays how he plays, mm-hmm. when this contract plays out, he's getting paid. And there are some people out there like, paid. like him. Um, did you see what like Ryan Clark said about this about this trade? Nope. Basically, he hated it because he felt that Mika that essentially that that he quit on on the Miami Dolphins. The, Ma- Ma- the Miami Dolphins quit on themselves. I'm like, um, so how would you feel if if basically you, and and um, if basically your whole franchise just said this season does it does not matter and and on top no, of that no. and on top of that we we it, we actually want you to try and play six different positions and apparently that was that was one of the, of the bigger issues whereas here in Pittsburgh you know it's they are they are trying to win year in and year out and they're and, almost p- perennial playoff exactly team not to mention it's one of the most storied franchises in all of sports like and and like too um from like from from what from what Fitzpatrick was saying like um and he even told his parents this he said I really want to be a a a Pittsburgh Steeler like he loves coach Tomlin he loves he loves Pittsburgh. Like it's just, it's a completely different atmosphere. It's a com- and for one of the most storied of the one of the most um storied franchises. And I I, I just don't get what some of these people just cannot uh, understand is like, you know, they weren't going to draft a quarterback like I said earlier. So again, awesome trade. I I just I love the aggressiveness of the, this team attacking a position of need that they desperately needed to add if they had any hope um in trying to in trying to even think about making the playoffs sometimes sometimes it just may take one person in the right situation to turn this turn turn it around yeah absolutely just a little if a little bit helps you only need a little bit to help to mm-hmm. to really make a change and in, in, in some instances, instances from uh, last week's game. So, okay, so um, for this next topic, um, Matt is not going to be touching this for obvious reasons. So I'm just going to for yeah for for those who don't know, um, I work at the pirate games, so I am for pirate charities, but still under the pretty much umbrella umbrella of the pirates organization so for the sake of my job and obviously obvious reasons um i will not comment so all the opinions here 
are obviously from John right. and uh, not me. So go ahead. <sighs> yeah, I mean, like this season for the Pittsburgh Pirates has been pretty damn embarrassing for a, a lot of like reasons, but this doesn't compare. I was, I mean, like, I really don't know how to honestly um, explain how I felt once I found out about the charges that were, that were pressed against, against Pirates closer Felipe Vasquez. So reportedly he, or, or no, um, pretty much he is being charged with, um, with, um, having a sexual relationship with with a 13 year old um from 2017 she is now she is now 15 um supposedly there were there were text messages where um he would like um talk to her often about about like meeting up and having sex um supposedly they had i believe they had sex in in his car, in her driveway. Uh, I mean, like, just the details in, in this are, quite frankly, just sickening. Um, and, I mean, like, the details were so bad, and supposedly that one of the reasons why the pirates and no one, el- no one else knew about this it was because apparently authorities were afraid that that he might actually flee the country um, back to... Back to um, Venezuela, um. So, I, 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 I mean, as an organization, um, I, I, I mean, the pirates handled this as best as they could. They pretty much took down every single banner or promotional material of his. His locker was completely cleaned out. It's essentially like he, like he never even existed. But he was placed on, I believe, it was the commissioner's list or, or something. Matt, I'm I'm pretty sure that was the case right um or it's it's like some like special name or something i i've escaping me right now okay but basically the yeah Yeah, so basically he isn't getting paid and 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 he's on administrative leave but like the, the evidence must be so overwhelming when they have you in jail and they are not even allowing you to even post bail like like just through everything that they have collected and supposedly there was some instance even in like Florida. So, so currently they're only answering for the charges that are happening currently in Pennsylvania in, in like, in like in Westmoreland County. So man, um, you know, I, I mean, this man deserves anything that is coming his way. Um, I hope that they throw the whole entire freaking book at him his quite frankly his baseball career is over i mean i mean he's even admitted to essentially everything um that has happened so um and and i actually read a report um earlier this um this evening where where um i'm gonna pull this up here um so basically the the ICE which i believe is some is some like um federal government a- agency or something um base yeah yeah um they are close they are closely monitoring the situation here and supposedly um due to the crimes that have happened they could very well even deport him um back to back to back to Venezuela so it's going to be um a, a very fluid situation um I'm I, I I'm honestly kind of surprised that the Pirates haven't haven't flat out cut him at this point. Um, I do feel that like that day is coming sooner rather than later. But, um, it's just it's a very sad and sickening s- situation to a really great um to a really great pitcher. But um, obviously that is, I mean, a- 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 anything on the field is completely secondary now. So um. Yeah, that was pretty much my whole en- entire take on that. Uh, but um, now let's um move on to to a few other NFL topics. Um, it's also um 
Um, Jalen Jalen Ramsey has apparently requested a trade from the Jacks from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, apparently, or um, or 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 not apparently. Um, him and and Jacksonville head coach Doug Doug Marone got into a really heated argument on the sideline. Apparently, he he skipped a like team meeting after after the game, and that's when he. Indeed, requested a trade from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, supposedly he doesn't even even expect to be a Jacksonville a Jacksonville Jaguar. Um, when Sunday hits, um, I'm skeptical at that. Um, just because because reportedly the Jacksonville Jaguars are asking for at least two first round picks, and for what the Steelers got, um, or or for or for what the Dolphins got from the Steelers I would imagine it's probably is going to be going to be something like that I'm interested if a Kansas City is going to get involved I pray that he's not a Baltimore Raven because if he's a Baltimore Raven my god that that defense is just frightening is it's it, gonna be a Patriot damn it yeah yeah um yeah oh god um so yeah, um, Matt. Any thoughts on the um, Jalen Ramsey s- situation there? Uh, no, I, that's that's been fluid for for a while there. Yeah. Um, Jacksonville is still kind of messed up down there. It's not as bad no. as the other Florida team, no, <laughs> Miami, but just it's. Not, not working out down there. Um, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's another case of player player not being happy. Yep. Wanted to do his own thing and get out, but I, I don't know. And, of course, I'm just waiting for this. I would like to welcome all the fans to our weekly edition on the podcast. It's called the What in the Hell Did Antonio Brown Do This Week? Similar to what I was about to say. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, of course, this man can never stay out of the news. But a video surfaced of Antonio Brown farting in his doctor's face. Also, this is the same doctor that he supposedly owes over e- over eleven grand to and unpaid services. Like my wait. My <laughs> question here is, and maybe I didn't research this good enough, but w- why is he being Who's videotaping himself at a doctor's office? Um, is that the that's the bigger question nobody's asking? Why is this being videotaped? Yeah, I'm, if who's I, videotaping if it? I, if I to guess, probably someone f- f- from his entourage. Um, I, why are they? Why are they? This is not like a mother going in for a, the child at a pediatrician. He's a grown ass man. You don't need an entourage. I gotta look this up because mm-hmm. that's making me like. Nobody's questioning why is he being videotaped, um, and also too, um, it it was also um, if it's not one thing, it's yeah. another. It was also reported that that AB lost his sponsorships with the with the helmet company that Good. that he supposedly um got, and also and also um and also um Nike has also dropped their sponsorship. Um, in response to all of the sexual um, uh, assault a- 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 allegations that, that he's currently going through, I, I believe actually that that there was a few more um, I- I- instances that that also came forward. So, I mean, it's just, I mean, like he he's been pretty quiet for the most part. I, I mean, like if you sign with the with the Patriots, like 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 you don't hear a single thing out of there. It's either you you either shut up. Or, or like you get cut, and pretty much a Bill, and pretty much Bill Belichick has his, has his fate in like his hands. So if, if he's coming in late to any meetings, is showing up late to a, a team plane or whatever, you know, I'm like he'll be gone because as we've seen with the Patriots, they are not afraid to cut anybody outside of um, Tom Brady, of course, but. I mean, it's just there's a clear track record there. So, I mean, like, uh, uh, honestly, I don't think that we're going to be hearing all, all all that much uh, about him uh, unless, like, some unless some new development's come up with his currently 
with his case against his against his former trainer um or if anything services about 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 his former chef and um and his former his former doctor did you find what you I, find I, i'm there? just reading that there was a tmc article i'm just like i don't know who that's bothering me who's why like what freaking social media we gotta film everything we do mm-hmm. by a, apparently a, 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 at the doctor's office and apparently there's notes not notes a text message from that Antonio Brown released that apparently is from the doctor yeah, saying I he's saw that too. yeah that he uh, thought the uh, stuff was funny as Hell, yeah. Funny as hell, yes. to, to paraphrase, because I don't want to go in and bleep this. Which is probably going to actually hurt his case against A.B., so, uh, yeah. If, 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 if they can prove that it was actually him. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This is stupid. Yeah. So, but anyways, um, moving on. Please. I believe it's time to talk about some about some wrestling here, Matt. Some wrestling. Okay. So um a few things to that took away from both Raw and SmackDown. <sighs> Baron Corbin is the king of the ring. <laughs> this guy. I will say this though. As much as as I hate this <laughs> and thou and thou probably be bleeped out there, but oh well. Um I will say he is one of the few of the few people who gets a a like actual heel heel oh, and actually he's coming heel. around to that. I still hate him, and I still think that that he still has go away. He but he is yes, getting he is he um, people are cheering to get him away, but he is getting over. And can I add? I don't know if you were going to say this. What's that? But his match with Gable was in really the final. Good. Best match he's had. It was very good. They event- they got the crowd behind them. Uh-huh. Got the crowd behind Gable. He did his job perfectly. It worked. I was entertained. Very good match. Uh-huh. Like I said, like I said, best of his uh, career in my opinion, or one of the best. And it worked out. I I, I should have known that. Looking at the history. And I feel dumb for not picking him, but usually King of the Ring winners are heels. Um, to get that snobby, that king gimmick. But I'm glad that they completely just didn't go in that direction. I mean, it's pretty clear they they were not going with like how with how they went with both with both um Sheamus. And and also Barrett when they're g- giving these guys some god awful king king. The mix. only person that mo- in modern modern day that pulled that off well was Booker T. Yeah, well because 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 at that point Booker he was already a like huge star too right. at, at that point. Um, and a, 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 as we've seen with like with like Booker, like he is such a a diverse. Her former from charismatic from, from 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 a serious to a comedic standpoint. I, I mean that gimmick that, that that gimmick was comedy gold. I back in the day I I hated him and it worked. I it was perfect. It was perfect because I just like oh, it's King Booker 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 um and Queen Charmel Queen Char- Oh yeah, she would never shut up. No. It was great. <laughs> It was good, um, but yeah, I, I do agree. Not give him the uh, a, a king gimmick, um, but he needs to be, and he is that snobby. I, I'm the best, blah blah blah. I'm the mm-hmm. king, which makes makes sense yeah. given the circumstance. But I think they're still keeping him with uh, uh, Gable, which I believe I think can only done right can help him i would imagine that the, the crowd's getting behind him more again and i i would imagine that they'll probably have a, a another match um at hell in the cell here that's what it looks like mm-hmm. or at the very least on um when uh on the smackdown yeah. debut and um, um 
as far as as far as with like Fox. yeah as far as w- with like raw in general it was pretty damn boring outside of anything involving the fiend I, Bray Wyatt. I, before we get back i i didn't yeah. think it was um well reportedly Heyman was in charge of the show yep um i don't think it was a bad show but it was really boring it was just like it, i think it, the i think the middle of the show mm-hmm. um in a way dragged i mm-hmm. but i think the book ends of the show were uh were good in my opinion um there's been worse um there's but been a lot worse there's been worse i i don't think it was i don't think it was by t- today's standards bad um uh, compared to what I'm um, SmackDown. SmackDown, gave us. SmackDown. SmackDown was a phenomenal show. SmackDown was was good. Um, and 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 also too that reportedly that was being that was being ran by by Eric by Eric Bischoff I, and and Bruce Pritchard, which in my opinion you could clearly tell there was a different feel to that show. It felt um there was there was more edge to it. Um, there was, I feel like that they were trying to actually build up some characters and some storylines, which I mean, like, honestly, like there are a a lot of the times where, where, where we quite frankly don't actually get that. Like, I love the interview with like, with, um, with Cole and, and like a Rowan. Can I, yeah, yeah. We we'll go that, and and I think we want to backtrack to uh, Bray Wyatt because I kind oh, of yeah. interrupted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right. I appreciate Eric Rowan these last, uh, maybe the last few weeks, and especially this past uh, Tuesday, the interview um, is really impressed me. Um, I'm glad they're giving him a chance because I feel like in the past when he was with the Wyatt family, he was. He Overshadowed, like yeah. yeah. He was overshadowed, muscle. shadowed. Then when they split, really wasn't doing anything. They had the tag team, the uh, Bludgeon Brothers, with Luke Harper. That I think could have went, could have went somewhere until uh, Harper got hurt. Uh, you can say, you can argue that it was uh, too gimmicky with mm-hmm. the hammers. F- fine, um, a solid argument. I'm not gonna say you're wrong. Um, but that it was kind of not going anywhere, um, with them. But now, and I I know we all poo pooed uh, the storyline with Roman, uh, but the interesting part is that I don't think we saw coming in a way. It it helped build Rowan up more, mm-hmm. and that, that was the way to do it. Um, I think it somewhat it got even though people were annoyed. I think people were more invested in a way because because it it kept it was building a story. Yes, you may disagree if if the story itself was is good or not. But what we've not seen a lot, maybe in the past, is that trying to tell a whole story and not just. Have well, it. I, I think that the problem has been though is like is like is like in certain parts they have gone like like way too slow. Like as far as like oh, I was like okay, who f- who actually attacked Rowan? Like it literally took them what four or five weeks until they finally yeah, you can say that yeah until they finally got somewhere. Um, but then but then when um when I, like yeah, I can't just I, yeah and but then when they had like you know Rowan a. Uh, Attack! Attack! Daniel, Dan, Dan, Daniel, Brian. Then and then re- reveal. Oh, oh, hey, actually, Harper. He was actually the the guy driving the actual the actual forklift. Or like that's probably that's probably what happened there. I'm, they, I don't think they said. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never actually said that. But but um, this is kind of this is kind of how how I feel that that the storyline is going to actually play out. I do feel that like that that the we'll probably see a tag team match with Harper and like Rowan maybe for, Hell in a Cell yeah but I think I think that they're going to actually reveal and swerve us and actually reveal that actually Daniel Bryan just like fooled us all and has been and has been in complete control of everything because I just don't believe that 
that that with that that with like that with like Rowan would would just easily just like turn on him like that. Um, so I'm not sure if you see it that way, Matt, but I do feel like that that they're going to do something where 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 uh, eventually they are going to to start a feud with Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns. I. I kind I of feel see that, but I I kind of feel that is probably where where they should go, honestly, because um because to me there's not too much traction in a feud with like Roman versus Roman, whereas whereas with like with Daniel I, Bryan versus Roman, they there's I, there's a a lot of I, potential I traction. Know, I, I think you could finally lead down that road. Mm-hmm. But after Rowan um, hitting the or slamming Daniel Bryan through two tables, mm-hmm. um, oh, that's weird. Sorry, this audio just looks like flatline here. But I've still that's the weirdest thing. We're live, pal. We're doing live. Like I, I see it. It's going, but it's this is weird. Anywho, um, oh, crap. Let me bring the, I don't know why it, the recording level went down on the, on the thing. Um, I hope that wasn't for long. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, anywho, he attacked Daniel Bryan twice and put him through a table. Would Daniel Bryan, uh, go through that just to full Roman Reigns. I I would not put it past him honestly. Um I feel like that like the with this with this with this new character of him, the thing with Daniel Bryan is like he's pointing himself over as as an intellect. So like I could see him like t- taking taking the absolute most physical pain possible to get it over to a point to try in to try and fool Roman into really um into all into as well like I think it's pretty clear that they want to um portray both both with Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan at, as like equals so I I feel like that was probably a, a, a way for them to to do that there we'll see what happens but i i do think that like that eventually that this is going to get turned around to a feud um involving Rome, Rome, Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan um some other things that happened um we had a, a segment with or actually no let's let's actually backtrack um, um let's let's actually backtrack um the fiend um my god um this is easily the best thing that 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 this company has right now um just the, this ju- is their broken matt hardy yep. that from TNA. exactly it's it, this is it this is it like just the crazy ridiculous like that segment like seth rollins was petrified of 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 this guy like just his his appearance just just the feel in the segment like like those creepy firefly funhouse man like where so good. where the freaking rabbit is telling seth like seth run like you know like like you get the hell out i mean like it's just it's such great storytelling that that's being told here but, like they have done pretty much this character perfectly like they need to go all the way with this guy and I mean, like, he absolutely needs to take that title from Seth Rollins. There's no way. There's no other way. You, you, he has to. He has to. It, it, the match almost shouldn't go on last because, maybe not because, I feel like it should be almost a squash match in it's a sense. sense. Uh, like, I honestly, like. Seth the, should not get much offense in. No, no, like. To me, like you need to really put, you need to put the fiend over as like the most unstoppable force in this company. And they have, and and I was even thinking of how like long term for this, and this leads into Kofi 
versus Brock Lesnar, which was announced on SmackDown. That that go ahead. Yeah, but um, but like that is taking place on October fourth, which I, I mean I would be shocked if he is not if he is not the new WWE champion. Could you imagine the Fiend versus Brock Lesnar at Survivor oh. Series? Like I want to see it and that, champion first champ. I don't care if it's not for a time. I want to that the the promos just if Brock's not there just with like Heyman, mm-hmm. he he can he can take a man and, claw and, and 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 then you have why like win over Lesnar like like there's there's not much more further that you can get there with with him. So I, I was just thinking about that, but but. But like going back, like um, to this thing, um, um, it was kind of weird. Um, Kane, <laughs> Kane came back, twenty four seven champion, twenty four seven champion, mayor of Knoxville. That was yeah. I don't care. I popped when there when our truth was in the uh uh whatever museum. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. Pan- and Kane's and Kane's there and mayor laughed, yeah. lost that it. it was giving him a tour. That but was so good. That visual. Of the fiend confronting Kane, though, coming with, from behind, coming from behind him was was pretty was pretty crazy. Um, they they could really do some some possible fun stuff with Kane there, which I didn't think was honestly possible at this stage in Kane's I, I, career. But I, it's probably just a one off. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like. But you gotta think putting them over, and, and and to you gotta think at some point that they're going to be that they're going to be re that they're going to be re pissing um um Wyatt versus ver, versus Taker too. So uh, I I mm-hmm. so um yeah like if that the could, clock uh, thing yeah if the clock thing is right from last week yeah, with eleven nineteen that's Survivor yeah, Series exactly so. so that's also a possibility too. That's a, yeah. You can maybe you can do well, that. And also too, it also depends what what happens with the when the when the WWE when the WWE draft comes and they and they um have their have the roster set and everything. We'll kind of have a better idea if. Uh, I think he might stay on Monday night. Yeah, yeah. Which are or 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 or. or um, I mean, um, would he? Because I mean, like, because I feel like that all hands are going to be on deck as far as as SmackDown. Because I think, I think it's going to be pretty clear SmackDown is going to be their a show um, going forward. Just because I, it's going to be tough. Though you, you have to you have to balance both. Yeah, which is going to be you interesting. can't put all your eggs in Fox and leave nothing for Raw on Mondays, yeah. and then and then you have NBC. Uh, upset exactly and um yeah so um going back over to smackdown we had a segment with kevin owens and shane mcmahon basically um kevin owens is suing shane mcmahon for for wrongful termination um he's suing him for 20 for 25 million dollars and um i believe he said if if he wins his court case then i believe shane is fired or a match or something there's a clause there's probably gonna be a match but the the thing that the I'm gonna applaud them here for logic, and the logic is um, that Kevin Owens uh, was was fine originally, or fire was fine because he put his hand on Elias, which was an out was an enforcer. Yep. And now Shane yep. attacks Kevin Owens, who was a ref, yep. and he gets fired for it. Taking a step back, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah like it's not like the, the, how many times that, and just in wrestling in general, that something happens, and then it happens again, mm-hmm. and it that nobody says anything about it. I will say though, one thing that that did kind of annoy me though, so. Ko is supposedly is supposedly fired, right? Yeah. Why is Shane bringing him back and allowing him to actually wrestle on like live events? I think he's said just the as the what he say on Twitter for the 
as the case of course case goes on just yeah, yeah. I think maybe the appease him to make him look like he's in real life maybe look like he's better and treated yeah, him fairly I mean, like, so he wins the case yeah I mean like that kind of bothered me because because eh. like to me I would just go on full on with this and like um and, and, and just be like and just it, be like no I'm gonna stick with it and I'm gonna prove that I, I that I'm gonna win in the courts and stuff but I, well if he if he does just live events because mm-hmm. they're it's overseas right I, I think it's overseas I, I believe so yeah they're probably do it because he's there but if they keep him off of TV mm-hmm. um as a active wrestler mm-hmm. if he, then I'm fine with it but if he's wrestling on TV like that makes no sense yeah but if he I, I probably know what for business sense they want him on the show and just to make it any like, names on there. So. They need name which if if Shane wants to do it make make him look good in the mm-hmm. court case mm-hmm. storyline yeah. wise. Okay, I I get it. Mm-hmm. To me, it's a live event. Yeah. Yeah. But if he's on TV wrestling, then <laughs> then you have a problem, good yeah. sir. And um, the other big, the other big major thing that was announced was that was that Brock Lesnar returned and he challenged Kofi and and Paul Heyman came out to challenge Kofi Kingston to a WWE Championship match on the first live SmackDown on Fox, which would be Brock Lesnar's first TV match in I believe over fifteen years. Yep. Um, so f- 04? Oh, 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 04, which was when he was still on SmackDown at the time. So, like, WWE was holding this card for a very long time. And, I mean, like. Now you, now you know why uh, he, Randy Orton lost at uh, Class of Champions. Because yep, yep, yep. he's going to make Kofi look strong. Or, yep, yep. Which, which now I think that was the absolute right move. I thought for sure that they were going to go with Orton, but. Now, business wise, smart as hell. Yeah, because now I um like to me like to me Lesnar absolutely has to win here yep. more so for 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 like Fox reasons and just like you know <laughs> like like when they are promoting whether it's college football um during during the playoffs and during the NFL season they are going to plaster Brock Lesnar. Everywhere they should and starting. I don't know if it's on maybe this weekend. It, it might, but like it, it's. I, I would. It's it's the absolute the absolute right call. Um, and like and, and like man, with like Kofi, he's had a really good title reign. I mean, I, I mean, like, he's not going to hold it forever. No, and like he's maybe been, he get it back later on. And but. I believe he's been. I think he would be champion for over over six months. So, which is way longer than I thought that he was going to be champion for. But, and this, and it's kind of a thing against him. It's just like his gimmick, I just don't think is what you're going to plaster on um, when like Fox wants to promote a sport like product. And like, you know, everyone knows who Brock Lesnar is, especially. That gets eyes. Exactly. It's just, it's. It's it all comes down to a business here, and that's exactly you get why you get. Uh, I'm I'm using Kenny Albert because he was doing their uh, the Steeler game last week, and they did a promo about the draft. Just imagine him. You're watching football. It's like live on October. F- was it four? Yeah, <laughs> forget on October Fox. 4th. We got Brock Lesnar fit for the WWE Championship. People know that name exactly. That like that's how you let's close the show. Yep. Main event, Brock Lesnar, Kobe Kingston. Yep. And it's as real as they can get. Yep. Exactly. And um and like it's going to be a sport like presentation. Um I definitely feel that it's going to it's going to to be that um they need to and I think they are going to promote the hell out of this. Um they did it they did it today oh well, today as of the recording. Um uh, so this is Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Braun Strowman yeah. was on in the booth for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals and uh, Cubs game on uh, uh, Fox. I I also b- 
believe too they had they had Booker T on some boxing um that that was going on um on some boxing panel shows um on on like Fox so like so like these guys are everywhere man like like I mean like with Fox it's pretty clear they value this partnership way more than they value when you pay that much money a, what, the billion more, well like in comparison to 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 the to the UFC which like like they just they never promoted those guys like it's just like to to the actual to the actual level um that WWE is getting like like there are ads on every single show like like a thirty second ad, sixty second ads, like like they are going all uh, out little, on this. Cut ins on the lower third in football games. Yep. Announcers are saying it. Yep. Um they, they're going all in with the investment. I can only imagine what's gonna happen when when like Rhonda finally comes back. I mean like sh- she's gonna be like just You put her you, I guess you gotta put her on SmackDown. Oh yeah, like have to like it's it, it, it's it's not even a, a a thought like you put her on SmackDown. That's it. And right? you advertise the crap out of that. Even if you even if if she doesn't surprise return, if mm-hmm. she announces okay, in in three weeks, Ron Rousey returns this on uh, the WWE on SmackDown. Yeah, football, college football. You plaster the crap out of that. Exactly. It's business. You may not like Br- Brock Lesnar. No. Probably gonna win again, but you step back and if it was your business, you you get him on that show. Between him and and like Ronda are could be their their two most important pieces when they are when they are on Fox. So like they're they're gonna be getting in be, be, between them, um, between them, Charlotte, Pecky, I, I feel is going to be getting a lot. Of promotion there they and, keep and, playing her damn theme song yep and and obviously and obviously roman reigns too is also going to be a big part of that but um i mean like it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to be actually doing with these rosters especially with the debut of nxt from last night they had their first show um it was a a very good show i i felt i i, I can't go in depth because i was working yeah. my other job so i was the big things I was paying attention for was in and out because at times I had to do other stuff, so I wasn't fully in. But I did watch the USA and the one on the, in the app. Um, I guess we're just gonna go just straight go into it. Yeah. Um. So basically, my takeaways were wrestling was really damn good, but like one criticism I did have about this show, I feel like that there was too there was too much wrestling on this show, like. To me, there needs to be a good balance, and like, and like, I'm not asking for for like segments to be to like, be like attitude era segments or like or or like 15 or 20 minute promos, but like, but like, I don't want the entire show being like say like 90 to 95 percent just strictly wrestling. I would like some interviews, some some um, or just like some just. Some like small like you know minor um backstage segments um they did air some they did air some really good um video packages on on the undisputed era was, um, on USA th- yep, yeah Velveteen Dream Matt Riddle they were all really good and it's a good way to introduce a new audience to these people who don't know they, who these people they are. had a good a short package about uh, Keith Lee and um. Yep. Oh, who's the other guy? Which they announced for next week: Keith Lee versus Dijak. Yeah, they. It, it, if you saw their last match, which that was a barn burner. Like the, like the, it, these are two of the best working big men in the pisses right now. So like you guys are all in for a treat. I mean, I I don't think that you saw um their last match, but Mm-mm. but like um hold on to your seat when you see this because. These two guys are two of the most athletic um, pigmen that I, quite frankly, have ever seen. But um, as far as the show in general, um, we had we had the show open up with a fatal four way to determine who would face who would face some um, Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Title between Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, um, Candice LeRae, and like Mia Yim. 
in my opinion, this was a really good opener. Mm -hmm. Um, and the absolute and the absolute right person went yep. over. Um, she, um, Candace, Candace Larray. Um, she is the only one who 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 hasn't faced um Shanna yet. Um, she's easily one of NXT's best best baby faces. And one thing is abundantly clear: NXT's women's um women's D D D division is so much better than AEW's women's division. Oh, yeah. Like it's it's not even close. Like. Like just with EO and Shayna, you also throw in other uh, ladies such as like um as like um Rhea as like Rhea as as Rhea Ripley. I'm in the UK, yeah. Uh, she, just I mean, I'm um, Tony Storm is also really mm. really good. Like they just they have talent out of the uh, out of the wazoo. Like um, just a a very good match. You, and you also had a little stare down with um with Candice and and Shayna and which I knew that was coming yeah and like it's just it's just amazing to me just how more serious that that NXT presents it it's women compared on the main roster I mean outside of like Shayna Becky and Charlotte like outside of those outside of those um four outside of those four women there like. Where are the rest of that division there? Like, it's just, it, it's just like, it's just taken and like treated more seriously and more, and more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, I'm like, um, more simple. Um, it, 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 it's just strictly about, uh, about their characters and, and the, in and the, in ring here. So, we had that 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 was really, really good um we also um had um we had like a Volter and um and 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 his group called imperium debuted i i kind of missed this because i was i was busy so it this was is all the you. only segment um on the show and i was done um but like but this is really cool walter is quite frankly one of, of the best Big men, um, in the business, um, and they are already teasing a feud between him and Kushida, and my God, though those matches are going to be insane. Um, but um, he was also involved in a huge um in a huge brawl at at the end of the night, which we will get into in a little bit. But but basically, he cut a promo essentially saying that that I will kick anyone's ass who does who does who does not who does not respect what is going on in this ring um and like them and the three of of other members of imperium which i believe were um were like um fabian eichner um who was the other guy and sandy um god his name escapes Ace. and who um uh, i mean uh, and like i'm uh, sandy oh i um, uh, his name is, um, escapes me, but also, um, um, but like, um, but yeah, um, it, yeah, um, the, the uh, uh, other two guys names, uh, uh, escaping, but like all four of, uh, of these guys just, just look like badasses. So like, like, uh, it just, it, it's, it's just like, they, they bring a certain edge and a certain coolness about them. Kind of similar with the undisputed era. Like um, um, like a very, very similar. It's except that with Imperium, like they take the in ring, like um seriousness and treat it like an actual sport. Like like it doesn't come off phony or f or like fake or anything. Like it's just, it's just like it's just like roll your sleeves up and just and just kick someone's ass. Yeah. Um. Essentially, so so that was really good. Um, then we had um a cruiserweight um a cruiserweight number one contenders match. Leah Rush returned, which um and he faced um only Lurkin and and the and the winner would get to face um at a future show um against against um Drew Gulak. I mean, like I guess this is pretty much the like start of of NXT incorporating 
the the crew to which here, which is exactly what need to happen. Because you can tell if two hundred five's going away if um exactly Vic uh, Joseph and the other person who I yeah don't know, yeah. but like goes uh, to Raw and like. This is exactly what they should have done with the cruiserweights. It's put them in front of up an audience who will actually care about them. And with NXT going to two hours, exactly, there's time you can you can mm-hmm. fit some stuff in. Hell, like you know, you could even throw in guys such as um, Kushida into there, which like there's like I have faith in like Triple H is going to do really well with this, and just seeing how rejuvenated that that. Leo Rush was like you. People forget, and and and, e, and even for me, that dude is insanely athletic. Just, oh, ju- yeah. just the intensity and the precision and speed of of like his moves, and and, and this match uh, against him Oni was just it was a really fun match to to watch. Her. Um. I'm honestly and really excited to see to see what they're going to do, and I believe that that they're a- adding what's um, that there is now going to be six six NXT takeovers now. So um, you know, and there's also word that that they might be adding a, another match or two on these takeovers. So you figure probably now that, that we're going to be seeing um um cruiserweight title title matches on these takeover shows, which is exactly where they should be at yeah uh because that's yeah that's the type of type of crowd exactly they, i i i haven't really watched 205 live neither but neither there's always them. um you always see on social media goes oh this match was this match was good blah 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 was good yeah but nobody no really cares. nobody yeah. w- watches it after smackdown put it on here it's, it's a dead brand it's a dead brand. Like it, that's it, mm-hmm. that is the thing that it's completely guilty of. It's just like Vince and the whole main roster just completely just ruined that whole division. And it's up to NXT and Triple H and Shawn Michaels and and, and the crew to 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 give this whole class a a a breath of from fresh air, a shot in the arm. Which like like with this match alone. Already gave back so much credibility to this, to this whole division, which honestly hasn't had since, since the Cruiserweight Classic, which which is still one of my favorite matches. I hope at some point that they do a, a another one of those. I mean, like I I I love tournaments. Like um, I mean, and I mean, and and, and with that especially, like you can very easily um. With these two our shows, um, do 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 things like that to like fill time and everything. So, you know, I'm really excited about that. Obviously, um, Leo, Leo, Leo Rush. He wins. Um, he's gonna be facing um Gulak. I wonder if they're going to be putting the title on to like Leo, onto Leo I, Rush here. I, I would not be. be yeah. I, I I would not be against it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. And like. To me, he's like one of the bigger stars that 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 they can use just because just because he was on the main on the main roster for so long. So, um, I mean, like this is where I think that like he should definitely should be at, um, because it was pretty clear he was never going to be getting back on the main roster or like or or like he just needed to like just like step away because of all of, of, of everything that had happened there with all of the um, stuff going on with um with the the backstage politics and everything um other things that happened on the show um oh yeah the velveteen dream versus Roderick strong for the um for the NXT North American championship the undisputed era have all of the gold mr Matt so um um, I pretty much figured. I pretty much figured that that this what that this was probably going to happen. Um, I mean, like for the past year or so, Adam Cole foretold as a prophecy that eventually he and the whole undisputed era would hold all of the titles, and now that ha- that has come to to fruition. Um, it was a so- a solid match. I honestly, for a lot of 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 this match, 
I was kind of bored to to, to be to, to be perfectly honest, but the last I would say like five minutes were were really good. But I I, I also think that what what really hurt this match was the commercial breaks. Um, and like that's something that I've always it's always been a pet peeve of mine. Our our commercial breaks during during matches. Um, I I really wish that there was a way where they could like where they could like work around that. Um, and, and like and like and like not and not have these during during matches because and a friend of uh, mine brought this up and Matt I want to bring this up to you mm-hmm. during an NFL game if there's a play happening they're not going to cut to commercial right right so why is this I mean and like and like I, I get they are two completely different for things. Uh, like point being, I don't think that they should be cutting to a c- commercial when they are are right in the middle of of a, a contest. Uh, is my point. I, I I think you can have a commercial as somebody's walking to the ring, but like coming exactly. up next is this blah 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 blah. Which have is perfectly it, fine. Have them still in there. Come back. What they do now, and their music's playing like nothing happened, and then you do that ring bell, and you go exactly. Um, Which is something that I'm really happy about with AEW because they pretty much said there are going to be no commercials when the matches are exactly happening, and I think that needs to be with every company, not not just AEW, it's just because like you really hurt. The overall match with with the people with with the people watching it on TV just because just because we are are like missing what like three minutes to be between, fair you know to be fair to play devil's advocate here what you're missing on TV is not really a lot because being live mm-hmm. you can look at you know just. Well, yeah, because they then they yeah. they don't do they try not to do the big things. Yeah, yeah, they try not to do it. So it's kind of like not I don't want to say always just rest holds, mm-hmm. but they they. But I do feel too that it and it, it kind also of kills the live crowd at points. Exactly when you when you sit there and it's just like okay they're at a commercial break they wait commercial break. flow. Here's the flow of and, of the match there you know. And I don't think you need. I I know with filling in breaks and all that, I'm not expert, but I, ten fifteen minutes I think is fine exactly. for a match. Uh, I don't think you need a match to go twenty a lot, maybe with some exceptions. In this case, because it was a like championship match, I, I get it. But like, um. But like there just there's there is no reason for commercials to be happening in my opinion um, during when matches are, are are going on. But um anyways um Roderick Strong he wins um he is a new North American champion with Tom Foolery um, with Tom Foolery and I absolutely believe that this is going to eventually lead to 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 Velveteen Dream going after Adam Cole for the for the NXT um world title although. It was also announced for next week that um, that that like Riddle versus Killing Dane will be a like number one contenders match, and the winner would face Adam Cole. So there's also that to throw in, in, into there, and I, and I believe it was also announced that in two weeks that Shayna Baszler would defend her title against Candice against Candice. Isn't against that up against the uh, AEW? AEW? Yep, sure is. Which. That match is going to be so much better than AEW's women's match. Like, did they say that at the Adam? They didn't say when the Adam Cole match would be. No. Um. The, basically, they are just announcing a a I, like a number one I, contenders I, I, match I, next I, week. I wouldn't surprise me if they put that on the second that show too. Yep. Oh yeah. Like a um, load at. Yeah. Like because because yeah because with the women's specifically. no war no war my butt. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh yeah, like but both companies are going to be throwing everything. Like every single week, it's just going to be. I mean, like it's going to be a, a lot of fun, fun for a, me. A, AEW advertised TNT had yeah. an advertisement 
during NXT on USA. Supposedly, and the, you tell me, oh, <laughs> supposedly that no was word. all. That was only for like for specific markets. Um, oh, we got it. It, it wasn't like a national. Well, like since well since a well since a AW but still is coming here. But yeah, yeah. I get you don't you don't do that if hell, it's heck, pretty crazy, huh? Heck, Mountaineer Casino mm-hmm. has an advertisement on one of the billboards across the street from Rivers Casino mm-hmm. to try to get people to come there. Yeah. So you you tell me a a w hell um doesn't want to do that. Hell um ninety three seven hell hell like ninety three seven the fan was also advertising a a a e w at the at at the Pearson e- event center. So, I mean, like, it's just well, it's like, there. it's pretty, well, cause it's there. Yeah. So. Well, true. But it's, it's still pretty, pretty crazy that a company, that a company not named WWE is getting, is getting, um, is getting mainstream, um, promotion, but it, it also helps when you are on one of the biggest networks too, in turn or so. So yeah, I'm um, getting a little bit off topic there, but, um, other things that happened tonight, um, uh, we just had a street fight, or it was supposed to be a street fight that somehow didn't get a clear winner, but because chaos, because chaos, um, between like Matt Riddle versus versus Keely and Dane, I I kind of marked out er, 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 earlier um, in the night when like when like a, when like Riddle released a, a shirt saying um. I am, I am, I am not your bro, <laughs> which was, which was words on um, Goldberg said to him backstage. That's, at, that's funny. At like summer same. So, so that was kind of funny, but basically this fight went all over the ar- arena. They eventually got to the backstage where they ran into him, Walter. <laughs> and, and, um, yeah, he, uh, act riddle and, and then like street profits came in and pretty much, pretty much everybody, pretty much Everyone, pretty much everyone backstage. It was, it was like it was like I was watching um, attitude errors um stuff when like when like Austin would like come in and just like annihilate everyone and everything. But uh, but yeah, this pretty much um ends and pretty much we never got a clear winner. No contest. A like no contest, and that's essentially how how the show ends. Um. Overall, like I said, a pretty good show from NXT, and mm-hmm. and reportedly that they did like one point two million. Or um, actually, it was yeah, or um, I think yeah, one point two. Yeah, it, it was like just over a million. Yeah, it was like one point one seven nine or something like that. Um, um, according to like John Pollock of the um of uh. Uh, uh, look at his site so uh so yeah not a, a a bad a bad debut I mean, because i believe that was pretty much on average what what like impact did um what impacted regularly um over on NXT, spike nxt um got the numbers here from tv by the numbers uh the eight o'clock i think it's broken up by mm-hmm. oh it's only one hour do at eight o'clock it had one point one seven nine million viewers, hmm. which uh, beat uh, some couple. It was uh, like a fourth. Shows. It was like a fourth on the cable TV. It was fourth. Yeah. It's fourth here in the eighteen to forty nine rating, which is big. Yeah. Uh, American Horror Story number one with one point oh rating in that demographic. Yeah. Basketball Wives, 0.5. Black Ink Crew, 0.5, both on VH1. And then NXT is 0.4, tied for something on MTV. So, I mean, not bad. Not bad at all. And I'm pretty sure that that, 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 like like USA was probably happy about that. And in Suits, coming in the last hour, the hour after. There was a major drop off from that. uh, 955,000. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, USA is just in there going money. This and, 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 and like and that right there is exactly why they they went and got NXT because because no other shows on 
on their network are just, are going to generate anything to what the WWE consistently I, gives them, even I'm, for a, as low as those ratings have dropped for the company. Like they're still higher than anything that else is going on on that network. I mean, I mean, it couldn't beat uh, Basketball Wives. Yeah. Just <laughs> basically be it in the same hour. Um, I, I couldn't find any other shows. Yeah. I'm trying to look at other. I mean, I mean, there's a Fox News show, news show that has 3.2 million, but that's a different demographic, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, viewership. So that's not really a good comparison. But again, I, th- I think it did uh, pretty damn well, and uh, we see we're going to see what happens in the future, and it's going to be really interesting to see, mm-hmm. um. When uh, AEW Dynamite yeah. comes, it's just funny. The wars Dynamite. you got Dynamite now, and then night, and then EC, WCW had Nitro. Yeah, like both like TNT explosive yeah. stuff here. Yeah, right. Uh, very original, but it, Dynamite. I don't. I don't know how I feel right. about that. All but, right. So just a few more things um, before we close this um, episode of the podcast. Um, there was a a like fight. Um, last weekend be between Justin Gaethje versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone, as I predicted, and pretty much no surprise to anyone, Justin Gaethje just absolutely just annihilates Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Um, he is just running through everyone at this point. His last loss was against Eddie, was against Eddie Alvarez. I believe that this is like Gaethje's third or fourth, third or or um, fourth straight knockout. Um. He, he he might be looking at a fight uh, against Connor, which that that would be very interesting because because I'm not sure if Connor if if Connor wants that guy like uh, just Gaethje is just he's a problem man. Um, and if he doesn't have the Connor fight, then I would I think that that he has to be in line for a title shot. Um, hopefully um hopefully Tony um hopefully Tony Ferguson. It's his title shot against against Habib, but uh, another dominant win for um for Justin Gaethje, and, and also it was just announced by Dana White on on on, on Barstool Sports that that in fact they are planning on doing a trilogy fight um between Stipe between Stipe Miocic versus versus Daniel Cormier um that I'm very excited for that fight I'm. I'm honestly am kind of surprised that 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 DC is still fighting, but I think that that he wants to try and get this win back. I do feel though that if he wins here, that I'm hoping that this is, is it for DC. Um, I don't think that that he will ever that he will ever hit that hit that John Jones fight again. But um, but yeah, so um, that's pretty much all for. Uh, MMA and I want to make something really clear to my good buddy Eric and he just tweeted me <laughs> and, and, and like you Matt he was like I wonder how fair and like balanced Matt and John w- will be when when they're talking about the 49ers versus the Steelers now Eric we have been friends now for I would say a little over five years now like I'm normally pretty pretty um i'm normally pretty 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 rational here and and actually we didn't we didn't really 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 talk about the 49ers game but honestly like this i feel is going to be a really really tough game um it's in san francisco or 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 in santa santa clara um, and the Steelers have really struggled out on on the west coast i mean like matt just just remembered those those god awful Oakland games, and that's all that we need to say there. So, uh, um, it's going to be a close game. I'm, as I said earlier, I'm very interested to see how how like Mason Rudolph does, but I do feel that it's all going to come down to um, whether this defense can can step up and make a few plays, and how well and how well Mason can and how well that Mason can move the offense. So, um, Matt. Do you have anything to add on the um, Steelers and 49ers there? Um, 
I I I disagree with what you said. Um, I think, I think we just have to play more consistent. Um, defense can make can't uh uh give up big plays. Absolutely. Um, at critical times. Um, but uh, hopefully it's a win. I, I think it could be a close game. Yep. And and um, it's a very pivotal game too because if the Steelers win this, they are then home on like Monday night against Cincinnati and that could very it could very very well t- turn the season around or, or around just uh, go, um, just like that so uh, if they say it's Cincinnati's a win um but anything's possible 2 and 2 is a lot better looking than 1 and 3 and then and then going home against Baltimore which that will be a very difficult game but but that's for a different podcast. But um, Matt, I, I believe it's time for us to 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 sign off here. So can you um send the people home and tell them how to how, how to find us and how, how to watch us? Well, hopefully they're finding us right now on this channel on a uh, YouTube Matt and John Make a Podcast. If you like this episode or any other episodes, give the video video a like, uh, comment, let us know how you th- what you thought of the episode. And uh, hit that subscribe button. It's going to help the channel out, and we would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe, people. Give, give us money already. <laughs> We're not doing it for the money. We're doing it for the love. Screw that. We, we, we want we want cash, Matt. It's going to take a while. It, it's going to take it's going to take a very long time. <laughs> but and anyways, <laughs> so with that. Uh, like I said, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we're going to sign off for this week. Um, we'll be back next week, next Saturday, hopefully at 3. We're going to keep that consistent. And uh, we will see you next week and uh, probably see what Antonio Brown's doing next week. Like He'll do something, I'm sure. For next week for a 10th episode. Woot, woot. So with that, have a good one.